그럼 지금부터 국제 음악 창작자 세미나를 시작하도록 하겠습니다. Now it's time to finally open the International Music Creator Seminar. 먼저 인사드리도록 하겠습니다. 안녕하십니까. 저는 오늘 행사의 진행을 맡은 유수민입니다. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Yu Su Min. It's a great honor and privilege to extend you a cordial welcome to this year's International Music Creator Seminar. 한국 음악 저작권 협회와 아시아 태평양 음악 창작자 연맹 그리고 국제 저작권 관리 연맹이 공동으로 주최하는 본 행사는 음악 산업의 발전을 위해 저작권에 관련된 이슈에 대한 더욱 심도 있는 논의를 위해 마련된 자리입니다. 이번 국제 음악 창작자 세미나에 참석해 주신 모든 분들을 진심으로 환영합니다. Co-hosted by Comca, APMA, and CSAC, this seminar is designed to enhance understanding and also to have in-depth discussions on copyright-related issues to vitalize the music and creatives industry. Once again, thank you very much for your presence to this year's International Music Creator Seminar. 본 행사에서는 한국어와 영어 동시 통역 서비스가 제공됩니다. 테이블 앞에 놓여 있는 리시버 사용하시면 되겠습니다. 한국어는 채널 5번, 영어는 채널 6번을 사용해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. For your convenience, simultaneous interpretation will be provided. Please your user receiver place in front of your desk. Here are the channels. For Korean, use channel 5. For English, use channel 6. Should you have any problems, please raise your hand at any time. Our staff will attend your queries. 본 세미나를 본격적으로 시작하기에 앞서 지난주 이태원 참사의 희생자분들에 대한 묵념의 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. 희생자분들의 명복을 빌며 유가족분들께 깊은 위로의 말씀을 전합니다. 애도의 마음을 담아 묵념하도록 하겠습니다. Before moving on, we will have a moment of paying a silent tribute to the victims, families, victims and families of last week's crowd surge in Itaewon. We send our deepest condolences to the victims and the bereaved families. 여러분 모두 자리에서 일어나 주시면 감사하겠습니다. Please stand off your seats. Please kindly take your seats. 그럼 이제 오늘 세미나의 문을 축사로 열어보도록 하겠습니다. 축사는 홍익표 국회 문화체육관광위원회 위원장님께서 해주시겠습니다. 여러분 홍익표 위원장님을 큰 박수로 맞아주시기 바랍니다. Without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Hong Ikpyo, the chairperson of Culture, Sports and Tourism Committee of the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him once again a big round of applause. ね、반갑습니다。国慶文化체육관광위원장맡고있는홍익표의원입니다。먼저、오늘国慶창작자세미나개최를진심으로축하드립니다。오늘행사를준비하시기위해애써주신추가열한국음악저작권협회회장님을
전문가 분들 또 관련된 분들에게도 감사 인사를 드리겠습니다. 잘 아시는 것처럼 저작권 보호는 창작 활동에 있어서 매우 중요한 의미를 갖고 있습니다. 창작자들의 정당한 권리, 그 권익, 권익 보호를 위해서 저작권에 대한 적절한 보호 조치와 정당한 보, 그 대가는 창작자들의 창작 의지를 더 활성화시킬 뿐만 아니라 이 사업의 지속 가능성을 유지할 수 있다고 생각을 합니다. 특히 음악 시장 같은 경우는 여러분들 잘 아시겠지만 이제는 음반이 아니라 음원으로 시장이 옮겨갔습니다. 음악 자체가 시장의 중심이 음원으로 옮겨졌기 때문에 저작권 보호가 훨씬 더 중요한 의미를 갖게 됐습니다. 또한 저작권 보호 문제는 이제는 한 국가만의 힘으로는 어렵습니다. 어, 모든 세상이 온라인으로 연결되다 보니까 한 국가에서 저작권 보호가 느슨해지면 그 국가를 통해서 저작권 보호에 큰 어, 어려움이 생길 수 있기 때문에 저작권 보호와 관련돼서는 한 국가만의 힘이 아니라 국제적인 협력이 더 중요합니다. 그런 측면에서 오늘 어, 여, 그 여러 국가에서 국제적 세미, 심포지엄 차원에서 어, 음악 창작자들을 보호와 관련된 세미나가 개최된다는 것은 한결 의미가 있지 않을까 생각을 합니다. 어, 대한민국 정부와 국회에서도 음악을 비롯한 모든 창작물들이 제대로 보호될 수 있도록 어, 여러 가지 보호 조치나 제도적 개선을 위해서 노력하고 있습니다. 오늘 이 자리에 많은 국가를 대표해서 저작권 관련 협회들이 함께해 주셨습니다. 아, 오늘 세미나를 통해서 음악을 비롯한 창작물이 보호되고 창작자들이 자유롭게 문화예술 활동에 전념할 수 있는 환경을 환경이 마련될 수 있는 좋은 정책적 제안이 제시되기를 바랍니다. 아, 오늘 세미나에서 논의된 결과를 바탕으로 국회 차원에서도 관련 법 제도를 mechanisms and the laws and the regulations will be also actively pursued in this regard. Once again, I want to extend my gratitude to all the participants at this seminar, and I wish you health and success in closing K-culture. Is also the symbolized in one of the areas in Itaewon, but unfortunately, on the last weekend, we had Itaewon accident. On the last weekend in Itaewon, known as the hub for the young people, and we do really hope that we don't really have such a very tragic accident again in the future. Thank you once again for your presentation. Thank you, Chairman, for your congratulatory speech. 네, 이어서 국제저작권관리연맹 시작 아시아태평양 지역 벤자민 응 이사님의 축사가 있겠습니다. 따뜻한 박수로 맞아주시기 바랍니다. Up next, I would like to invite Benjamin Ng, Asia Pacific Director of CSAC, to give his congratulatory speech. Please give him a big round of applause. Honorable uh, Mr. Hong, uh, Mr. Chu, uh, Chairman of Comca, uh, Mr. Yun, Chairman of APMA, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends and creators around the world coming to this seminar, uh, I wish you uh, very well today. Um, since the establishment of APMA in 2016 in Beijing, APMA has been the great platform connecting creators in Asia Pacific and also creators around the world. Under the leadership of former chair Tokura uh, Shinichi Tokura, now heading over to Mr. Chu, Mr. Mr. Yun, uh, many meaning meaningful initiatives have been supported by APMA for the interests of creators, including bio study and supporting creators to set up collective management organization in developing countries. APMA will continue and they will be doing more for the creators in Asia Pacific region to overcome challenges in Asia Pacific countries. Although we can see more and more people aware the importance of copyright and then more and more people would I think copyright creators, creators should, should deserve more protection of uh, copyright protection. Unfortunately, there are still 
many challenges in this uh, environment, especially in a digital era, that a lot of new uh, platforms is uh, coming up and many new technology is coming up, creating more challenges to copyright protections. But I, I'm great to be coming back to the creative seminars, which uh, previously have been organized in Bangkok, Jakarta, Tokyo, Beijing, and Macau. And this is the second time that we come, uh, organize these creators' seminars in Seoul. Um, the, one of the big reasons we are choosing Seoul is everyone knows that um, K culture, K-pop, uh, movies, TV series, Korean traditional art is really uh, creating a lot of popularity around the world. It's leading the creative industry not only to bringing the Korean culture from Korea, and then it's very important that we have a very good copyright protection system in Korea that enable this to happen. So we want to, after three, two, more than two years of this uh, COVID pandemic, we want to have a brick, uh, fresh start that we can organize the creator seminar again in person to meet with creators from Korea and around the world in Seoul again. Hopefully, we'll mark a new starting for working together to protect the creators, not only in Asia Pacific, but around the world. I think this is a very important topic that we're going to discuss today, buyout and private copying levy, which is also something, uh, the challenges that the creators have been facing, and we would like to provide more uh, information at educational platform to educate creators about their rights and calling for better protections for their rights under the copyright system. Initially, uh, my Director General, uh, Gadi Oron, would be able to come to Seoul in person to be the uh, speaker today. Unfortunately, because there are some urgent matters, he cannot come. So I'm uh, asking I'm being asked on his behalf to uh, wish this creator seminars to be organized uh, very, very successfully. And once, uh, lastly, we also show our deepest uh, uh, condolence to what happened last week in Itaewon. We hope we can all overcome this difficulty and bring together to a better uh, protection environment to support the creators uh, for after this very difficult time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director, for your heartfelt congratulations. 마지막으로 한국 음악 저작권 협회 추가열 회장님의 축사가 있겠습니다. Last but not least, Mr. Chugayer Komka will deliver his congratulatory president of Komka will deliver his congratulatory speech. 큰 박수로 맞아 주시기 바랍니다. Please welcome Mr. Chu to the podium with a warm round of applause. Good afternoon, Honorable Mr. Hong Ikpyo. Mr. Yoon myung Sun, Mr. Benjamin, Mr. Satoshi Watanabe, ladies and gentlemen, creators, authors, and composers, all those in the music industry. Before I start, I would like to express my deepest condolences to the families who have lost their loved ones in Itaewon as we mourn this horrific tragedy. Welcome to Seoul and to this year's Creator Seminar. This is Chu Gaiol, Chairman of Korean Music Copyright Association, also known to many of U.S. Comca. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all here today on behalf of Comca. Seeing how many have willingly traveled long distances to be here once again reminds me of just how important our musical work is. As the world develops at a seemingly rapid pace, 
the music industry has grown remarkably as well. Nowadays, the means of music consumption are much more diverse, not only limited to streaming and live broadcast, but also OTT platform, metaverse, etc. As the options vary, it becomes even more challenging to ensure all and every rights of the music creators are protected. It is realistically quite tricky to make sure the rights are infringed in any instance. This, in turn, directly leads to less remuneration for the creators as well. That is why we are all gathered here today at the Creator Seminar, united through one passion that transcends all languages and disputes. To come up with better ideas and solutions to protect the rights of our music creators at the policy level. I, myself, am a singer-songwriter, and I am proud to be one. Music brings joy, brings comfort, and brings passion. Music has changed in my life. It is difficult to imagine life without music, and that proves how much of a pivotal role our music creators play in the world we live today. Through this seminar, through this precious opportunity, let us focus on our fundamental role in music industry. There is none other but to protect the creators' rights at all costs. In order to fulfill this ultimate goal, we need to stick together, come together as one, and tackle copyright issues. All of us from diverse nations and cultures need to empower, support, and lead each other in order to vitalize our community. If there are some that fall behind, we must motivate them to walk at a similar pace. We are not in a competition. As the music industry and technology is rapidly changing, also should our painstaking effort to protect the creator's rights. It is our challenge. The future clearly belongs to the ones who better themselves with knowledge which we aim to improve at what we do as copyright management do across the globe. We need to inform ourselves of the pending issues within the industry and also increase public awareness of copyright issues. Music has no barrier. Music has no limits. Music has no discrimination. Music is the language of our soul. We are protecting the essence of our existence by being able to better protect the rights of individual creators that make it. In a nutshell, protection leads to growth. I believe those of you present today are the key actors in translating this vision into reality. And I sincerely hope this seminar will be another watershed for the development of music industry as a whole. Before I finish, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to all of you I appreciate you all for your kind attention and being here as well. Please allow me to end my remarks 
with one of my favorite quotes by T.S. Eliot, you are the music, while the music lasts. Thank you very much. 네, 회장님 말씀 감사합니다. Thank you, Chairman, for your heartfelt congratulations. That was Chu Gaier, President of Comca. 네, 한번더 동시 통역 서비스 안내 드리겠습니다. 리시버 착용해 주시면 되고요. 테이블 앞에 놓여 있는 리시버 착용해 주시면 됩니다. 한국어는 채널 5번, 영어는 채널 6번을 사용해 주시면 되겠습니다. Once again, for your information, simultaneous interpretation will be provided. You can use channel 5 for Korean and channel 6 for English. Thank you. 네, 다음 순서로 아시아 태평양 음악 창작자 연맹 윤명선 의장님의 기조 연설이 있겠습니다. 의장님을 박수로 맞아 주시기 바랍니다. Up next, we would like to invite Mr. Yun Myung Son, Chairman of APMA. Please give him a big round of applause. Greetings, everyone. This is Chairman of Asia Pacific Music Creators Alliance, Myung Son Yun. Before I begin, I would like to express my deep, deepest condolences. To the families who lost their loved ones in the tragic Itaewon accident. And last, we have finally met in person. I would like to welcome you all to Korea. For the last three years, we've had many virtual meetings repeatedly again and again. Um, it was very frustrating and upsetting. It is a great pleasure and joy to see all my friends from overseas and Korea here together at one place. I would like to this opportunity to introduce you all my friends who have come to Korea in spite of the awful COVID-19 situation. Please give an applause when I call their names. First, let me introduce you my dear friend, Sisak Benjamin Ung, the director of AP Legion. <laughs> Another great friend and companion, Satoshi Watanabe, Chairman of Shisak APC. And next, Ariem Mulema, who is the Vice Chairman of Siam. And next, Tani Chalpinen from Thailand. And next, uh, Unkwok Yangyen from Macau. Last but not least, many other friends and colleagues from our sister societies worldwide also attended today's event. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> also, once again, I would, like, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all my friends in the Korean music industry for attending today's Music Creators Seminar. Now, nay, let me introduce you APMA, Asia Pacific Music Creators Alliance. There is a global organization called SISAC, International Confederation of Societies of Authors and Composers. At the same time, there is CM, the International Council of Music Creators, which is under a brotherhood relationship with SISAC. We also have five regional partner alliances under SIAM. EXA of Europe, ALCAM of South America, MCNA of North America, PAXA of Africa, and APMA of Asia Pacific. APMA is Music Creators Alliance that was established at the Beijing World Creators Forum in November 2016 for the development of the music copyright industry in the Asia Pacific region. And currently has 21 Asian Pacific countries as its members. Mr. Sunichi Dokura, who is currently leading the entire Japanese cultural industry as the commissioner of the, the Agency for Cultural Affairs of Japan, served as the first chairperson and I was elected as the second chairperson in 2021. Ms. Amanda Brown from Australia is the vice chairperson and seven executive committee members from China, Thailand, the Philippines, Macau, Indonesia, Taiwan, Japan are currently working in cooperation. Please give a big round of applause to executive, executive committee members who are struggling hard for the development of Asia Pacific. 
The main agendas for today's seminar are copyright buyout and private copying navy. With the help from Professor Ellis Lee from the University of Hong Kong, the research of the first agenda on copyright buyout has served as a great foundation. Through a video clip, Professor Lee will share with you the progress and current situation of each Asian Pacific country's buyout system, as well as the research process and result of in-depth analysis from various perspectives. The second agenda, Private Copying Navy, will be presented by Professor Dehui Lee from Korea University, who is a top expert in this field. He is like a piano and guitar to music creators, the magnificent person he is. I would like to thank Professor Lee for his participation in today's seminar. On behalf of APMA, I would like to express, express a sincere appreciation to, to Professor Ellis Lee and Dehi Lee for their efforts and dedication. Please give a big round of applause to them. Please look at the screen. 3분, 3, 4분 정도 요거 어 아프마에 대한 도네이션 부분을 소개드리고 끝내겠습니다. I'd like to also share some of the donation programs for APMA. APMA. 어 음악은 산업이다 이렇게 얘기하는데. Music itself is an industry. 이제 산업이고 부정할 수 없고. It is inevitable and everyone agrees with the idea. And music itself is an industry. In the music industry, that we are still leaving a lot of the, the money and the cost, along with a lot of the fierce competitions and the conflicts. So we are now facing very small and the little stages of the wars among the stakeholders. In the music industry, CIC, as you know, the Copyright Invest Corporations, as a type of the new the business communities, as you can see here. As you can see here, the money from the music industry is about the 6.1 trillion won, and we assume that the revenues will be increasing over the time. Of course, in Asia-Pacific regions, we see that the market from the music industry will be definitely and rapidly increasing over the time. In doing so, probably if we also have the solid foundation, we see that there are a lot of the synergy and that comes from the Asia-Pacific music industries. In the future. Of course, we may have some of the conflicts between the creators and music industries, but still, these two pillars are the fierce, uh, having the fierce competitions, but at the same time, they are, should be also connected together at the same time. And when it comes to the Comca, and we have seen that a lot of the, the competitions truly have the further of the progress, along with a lot of the, the lawsuits over the time, as we have the seen and encountered a lot of the very severe the challenges and the law suits. And as the chairman, I have been also prosecuted from the 16 times for in terms of the lawsuit. But, but 16 times altogether, I have been the fully not the, um, suspicious from the, those prosecutions. As the chairman of the APMA, APMA, and while working as the chairman of the APMA, I have also presented in English just before, and I'm not really fluent in English. Of course, I can read the English sentences, but still I have been the learning the English by YouTube for the eight months, and I see that the programs for today's seminar takes about the two hours, and we assume that the member countries in the Asia Pacific under the APMA will be also exceeding the 20 countries in the future. Of course, we also need to get prepared for another types of the conflicts and the war in the industry. As we have this, the theme for the section two, which is the private copying levy, among the different stakeholders like the creators, music industry, and other industries, still, and that is the time. That is why definitely the APMA, APMA is definitely needed and essential for enhancing and protecting the rights of the creators. In this regard, I'd like to share some of the relevant informations. 
throughout the slides here, APMA, APMA, in the Asian the regions for the creators and authors, so that we like to also looking forward to the more cooperation and support from stakeholders in the, in the music industry. And we can also provide and support so that the composers, authors are to be more come into the soli solidarity. For creators, and as you can see here, the diagram, it's better to embrace the creators like the angels embracing us on both hands. The Asian music market is very huge. And once we have the very the solid foundation, we see that we can have a lot of the more outcomes and successful the result from the music industry and the Asian region. In this regard, we'd like to ask for the further support and the donation into our organization, APMA. As we have seen that some challenges and issues in the music industry, we're also looking for, for to seeing the more cooperation and support and still, please be aware that if, even if the donation is the very small in terms of the amount, but you can also contribute a lot for enhancing and promoting the copyrights and their the systems for the creators, as we have also done a lot of efforts in the past. So please also make some donations for us. And thank you very much for your, your listening. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, for your informative speech. 다음으로는 이 세미나를 기념하기 위해 사진 촬영이 있을 예정이오니 축사자분들과 발제자 그리고 창작자분들은 무대 위로 올라와 주시기 바랍니다. Before we move on to the next session, there will be a photo op to commemorate this seminar. Opening speakers, presenters, and creators, please come up to the stage for the photo op. 세미나를 기념하기 위해 사진 촬영이 있을 예정이오니 축사자분들, 발제자분들, 그리고 창작자분들 모두 무대 위로 올라와 주시기 바랍니다. There will be a photo op to commemorate the seminar. Opening speakers, presenters, creators, and panelists, please come up to the stage for the photo shoot. Thank you. We would like we would like to ask our distinguished guests to kindly return to their seats. Thank you. We are arranging sofas for the next session, so please wait for your wait at your seats. 그럼 잠시 무대 전환 시간을 갖는 동안 오늘 세미나 프로그램을 간략하게 소개해 드리도록 하겠습니다. While we are arranging the sofa, please allow me to simply introduce the seminar and presentation. 어, 이나대학교 홍승기 교수님의 주제로 진행되는 이번 세미나는 첫 번째 세션은 국내에서도 분야를 막론해 오랜 이슈로 자리 잡고 있는 매절 계약, buyout에 대해서 논의합니다. Section 1 will be about buyouts, the long-standing issue in the copyright-related industry. 그리고 세션 2번, 세션 2에서는 어, 사적 복제, 복제 보상금 제도로 
제도에 대해서 이야기 나눌 예정입니다. Section 2 will be about discussions about the private copying levy. It's another very important issue in the copyright related and the music creatives industry. 네, 그럼 이제 본 세미나의 좌장이신 인하대학교 법학 전문대학원 홍승기 교수님을 무대 위로 모시겠습니다. Now, I would like to invite Professor Hong Seung-gi from Inha University up to the stage. Yeah, Hong Seung-gi입니다. This is Hong Seung Ji. As a moderator, I want to say something wonderful that the previous speaker, President Yoon Myung Son, told very important things. Actually, a contract is a very important issue. In Korea, there has been an issue with buyout, especially in the film industry. Creators right and the performance right holders right were actually going through a lot of issues related to the buyout also we have issues in the digital single market and in the beijing performance rights related uh, discussions we are also discussing the importance of buyout so if you hand over your right in a contract after receiving some proceeds or revenue then that's the not that's not the end in the area of creative industry because for creator cre creators need to have some more room to continue the creative activities and for that we need to ensure that the the creators' uh, rights are properly protected, and we need to solve the issues in the buyout contract. Although Professor Alice Lee uh, is not here offline, she sent us a pre recorded video, and she will share with us very interesting research results with us. So it will be worth watching the pre-recorded video of Professor Alice Lee's lecture. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. It is my great honor to be given this opportunity to share with you some observations and recommendations about copyright buyout in the music industry. I will not take up too much of your time as this should be a joyful occasion for reunion after COVID. So I will be brief. First, Let's see what we did in the past four years. Despite the interruption of COVID, we conducted a comparative study on copyright buyout, law and policy in the music and related industries in Asia Pacific. And it is divided into two phases. First, phase one, there were eight territories in alphabetical order. They are Australia, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, Macau, South Korea, Thailand, and Vietnam. And we already presented the preliminary findings of phase one at the 2019 Creators Seminar. And we also pre presented the final recommendations at the 2021 online symposium. Today, we are looking at phase two, which involves six territories. In alphabetical order, they are China, India, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Taiwan. And for phase two, we will briefly look at these four things. First, the scope and the purpose of the copyright buyout study. Two, what we learned. Three, what we observed. And four, what we recommend. So first things first. What is copyright buyout? Let me give you a very simple example. Let's say a TV producer has offered to pay me a lump sum to buy all my rights in my song. So remember, this means I shall receive no more money afterwards and I cannot use my song anymore after this receipt of payment. So this is what we call buyout. That means once and for all, I give away all my rights just for one payment. Is this a good thing? Well, 
it is for you to judge, not for us. But the thing is, through this purpose, through this study, we want to enable creators to make informed decisions. That's our first purpose. Number two, we want to raise government and public awareness of this issue. So in order to fulfill these two purposes, we have distributed questionnaire. And that is our second point. What we learned through this questionnaire that we sent to the collective management organization or the CMO in the interested territories. So for phase two, we have identified six places. We sent a questionnaire to these CMO for information. And in the questionnaire, we asked seven questions about copyright law, contract law, remuneration for creators, termination of contract, ownership of copyright, government copyright, as well as public campaign to raise awareness of copyright issues. So now let's very briefly look at what we have discovered in relation to these seven areas. First, under copyright law, we asked whether moral rights can be waived in these territories. Now, first of all, what is meant by copyright and what is meant by moral rights then? Of course, copyright refers to the rights enjoyed by copyright owners, such as the right to copy, to distribute or communicate the work to the public. Whereas moral rights means the rights that are enjoyed by creators, such as the right to be identified as the author, the right to integrity of the work. And the question we asked is whether moral rights can be waived. And the word waived here means whether it can be contracted out or given up. That means you don't want your protection anymore. You just want to give away the right to be identified as the author or the right to integrity of the work. We want to find out whether this is permissible under the copyright law in the relevant territories. And our discovery is that in the six places, actually most of them say, yes, you can waive, you can give away your moral rights if you wish. It is only in the Philippines and the Singapore that they have different provisions. In the Philippines, they actually provide that moral rights can be waived, but it must be by a written instrument. But it cannot be given away to a third party. And in Singapore, it's even stricter. They said just no waiver whatsoever of moral rights. That means a creator can always have the right to identify himself as the author. This right cannot be given away. So this is our first finding. The second question we asked is about regulation of unfair contracts. And by unfair contracts, we mean two things. First, whether you enter into a contract without consent, that is the first meaning of an unfair contract. For that meaning, we find that in all six places, they do have a legal provision prohibiting this kind of contract. That means contract must be entered with your consent. Otherwise, it will not be valid. There is another meaning of unfair contracts, and that is the right-hand side on the slide, which is about contract terms being unfair to a contracting party. Now, in this sense, we find that none of the six territories has any provision, legal provision, about this kind of unfair contract. Now, therefore, at the end of this presentation, you will find that we make five recommendations. And our first recommendation is that this kind of unfair contract terms should be regulated. All right, and then in the questionnaire, let's move on to our third um, topic, which is the right to fair remuneration. And we find that in the six territories, only two have provided for a right to remuneration, but in different terms. Now, so let's look at them one by one. In China, we find that there is a mentioning of right to remuneration in the copyright law of 2020, which took effect in June 2021. But this provision, Article 16, that you can see on the screen, 
only provides for a right to uh, get remuneration for the copyright owner. It does not specifically mention the creator, but the creator may or may not be the copyright owner. Now, therefore, we would think that there could be a better, stronger protection for creators in the law. And so that is where we can look um, to India for reference, because in India, their Copyright Act specifically provides in Section 18 that creators are entitled to receive an equal share of royalties when the works are exploited as part of a film or a sound recording except in the situation of communication to the public in a cinema hall. And not just that they have this provision in the law, but also we observe that the Indian Performing Rights Society has helped creators collect at least 50% of their royalties. So we find this a very good practice and a very good legal provision. So this is also one of our recommendations, that we should have a legal provision for fair remuneration. Okay, in the questionnaire, our fourth topic is termination of copyright by our contracts. And we find that in all the six territories, there is no legal provision whatsoever on the termination of copyright by our contracts in special circumstances. And so our recommendation is that we can actually learn from other places. For example, from phase one, we know that in places like Indonesia and Thailand, if the contract, the bio contract is for an unlimited period, then it will be terminated automatically when it reaches 25 years in Indonesia or when it reaches 10 years in Thailand if there is no exploitation whatsoever during that period of time. So this will be something recommendable to have such express provision in the law. The fifth area we looked at in the questionnaire is about ownership in case of employee or commissioned works. So what is meant by an employee work? That means it is created by an employee during employment. Very simple. But what is a commissioned work then? Commissioned work is created by someone who is not an employee, say a freelancer, pursuant to a commissioning agreement. So in each case, we want to know who owns the copyright. And we find that in the six territories we surveyed, only China provides that the employee will own the copyright in the first case, and the freelancer will own copyright in the second case. Whereas in the other five places, they all provide that in the case of a work created by an employee, it should be the employer rather than the employee who will own the copyright. So this is an area where we think we could encourage fair negotiation between employer and employee so as to give the creator, that is the employee, better protection. Now, let's look at what they have provided in China in greater detail. So in China, they actually looked at uh, employee work and commissioned work separately. So for works created by an employee, if the employer, um, unless the employer is by law, administrative regulations or contract entitled to the copyright, otherwise the employee shall be the owner, which is good. And in the case of commissioned works, you can see the final last sentence here. If there is no contract, or no express term in the contract, then copyright will be owned by the freelancer. That means the creator, the author. So this is something we can learn from. And we also notice that in Singapore, they have a new requirement, a new provision since their um, copyright act took effect in November 2021. And the new requirement is that any agreement modifying the ownership of copyright must be in writing. So this is good because there will be written evidence of any negotiation between the parties. So this will help creators to a certain extent. 
Okay, now we have come to the final two questions that we asked in the questionnaire. Question six, are there any provisions on copyright ownership of the government? We find that only three half of the places, that means, have these provisions, namely Malaysia, the Philippines, and Singapore. And the last question we asked, whether there is any public campaign to raise awareness of copyright issues, we find that Singapore does have such campaign. And so we would like to make the following observation. In Singapore, there is no copyright buyout issue at all. Why? Because they have comprehensive public campaigns to raise awareness of royalties. Royalties means the continuous payment that you as a creator will be entitled to for the exploitation of your work rather than just a lump sum. So this is a very important right that we would like to promote. And Singapore has actually uh, raised awareness of this important right. And therefore, their creators, they are well aware of their entitlement. So there is no copyright by alt issue. Whereas in India, as we have seen, they also have certain provisions in the law about right to equal share of royalties. And they also have section 19 at the end of this slide, which says that uh, even if there is assignment, that means transfer of copyright to another party, the creator's right to claim an equal share of royalties shall not be affected. Now, this is very good legal provision. But on the other hand, we can observe that there is still buyout, copyright buyout in practice. So what does that mean? That means even if we have perfect legal provisions on paper, we still need the cooperation of the interested parties to make sure that the law is actually observed. Now, so therefore, you can see what we are going to recommend is not only improving the law, but also cooperation among all the stakeholders to raise the awareness of this issue. So you can see we make five recommendations. And of these five recommendations we make, the first three are about amending the law. First, we recommend that we can regulate unfair terms in copyright by our contracts. Number two, we can grant creators the right to fair or equitable remuneration. Number three, we can have compulsory inclusion of an option for the creator to terminate the contract if there is no exploitation of the work. In addition to amending the law, we also suggest number four, for employee works and commissions works, we can encourage fair dealings and fair negotiation between the parties. Because you remember that in most of the cases, the parties will be able to negotiate their own contract terms. So they should know what to put in or what to take out from the contract. Last but not least, number five, we can organize public campaigns to raise copyright awareness, in particular, awareness of copyright buyout issues. So our final suggestion is that to ensure a better environment for creators, it takes the joint efforts of all interested parties. And the way forward is lobbying with the governments so that they can take the lead in implementing fair contracts for creators not only creators in the music industry, but also in other creative industries. So this study, this humble study, is just the beginning. And we look forward to a brighter future for all creators around the world. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.
세션 1을 진행하기 위해 좌장님과 패널 분들을 무대 위로 모시겠습니다. Let us welcome our moderator, Hongseung, Professor h o n g s u n g i and the panelists up to the stage. 모두 큰 박수로 맞아주시기 바랍니다. Please give him a big round of applause. The topic and theme was very interesting. The copyrights and the waivers and the moral rights and all the related the determination, the processes to really the retrieve the copyrights as well as the remuneration were a very key topic throughout the previous presentation. So I'd like to also listen to some the penis comments from the three panelists. So first panelist will be the Benjamin Ng, director of the CISAC Asia Pacific. He has also delivered the open remarks before. And second, the panelist will be also joined by the vice chair of the Kumka, Bakaki. And the third panelist will be Motapo Sirichum Khan from Thailand, the chair of MCT of Thailand. So first of all, I'd like to also follow the orders for the panelists. So Benjamin Ng, could you also share your comments for 10 minutes? Thank you. Yes. Um, thanks very much, uh, Professor Hong. Uh, I think this is a really important topic that we, um, Professor Lee have mentioned earlier. Um, unfortunately, Professor Lee cannot be able to join us uh, in person today, but uh, she's watching uh, through YouTube Live right now, I'm sure she will agree with me. This is a very important topic. Um, in in fact, um, CSEC is also supporting this uh, educational uh, campaign around the world, and we work with um, many collective management organization and other organization. Just like Professor Lee mentioned at the end, is education is very important. I think um, the creators. We're not saying that you cannot uh, sell your rights because for a different reason. But we, are, we, we, very, we would like to uh, make sure when you are selling your rights, or even though you don't know you're actually selling your rights, before you are dealing with other third party about your rights, you need to be understanding what exactly your rights are so that you'll be able to assess what you are able to uh, deal with your rights. So um, that's for, for the reason is uh, to support uh, these kind of very basic information about buyout. Um, CSEC worked together with APMA and also with um, Your Music, Your Future website that I will, uh, uh, international that I will mention later, and CM, uh, the, the uh, International Councils of Music, was, uh, that we are working uh, together with this brochure. I think you will be able to uh, get a bro uh, Korean version of the brochure uh, here. I think uh, my colleague has been uh, published this in a physical form. Um, what it is about is, is really highlighting very basic element on how much do you know about copyright buyout. It's uh, laid down some information as to what are copyright, in what circumstances you will be dealing with maybe concern about the rights you are with third party. And when you are facing of this situation, what are the basic things you know about uh, your rights, how to ensure you want to protect your rights? Because I, I, especially for young creators, they are, they, they are very interested to do creations, but they have no idea how and what is copyright can do for them. And sometimes, because they only want to get a job, and I'm sure many creators are here, you got, got through these stages, you have no choice, someone give you a contract, you just signed it. But what is it about? You may not be able to afford a lawyer to help you, 
but at least you know what exactly copyrights are and then what rights you have to deal with before you sign this contract. So this brochure, at least we want to raise awareness, very simple, very layman terms that allow creators to understand what ac actually the, the rights they are protecting. Um, in this brochure, we are highlighting um, with some very famous uh, artists, uh, musicians, uh, our chairman, uh, Bjorn Uvelis, very important member of ABBA, and he's really supportive to this campaign. And Mr. Yun myung you just met, you just heard what he really said about how we should really protect uh, bio. And we also, um, in some of the uh, example, to uh, highlight some of the imp important message from some creators that is also concerned, especially for the music creators in the uh, audiovisual industry. And then when they are facing, especially when they are writing score for films, and right now more and more with these OTT platforms like Netflix, they are giving you a very standard uh, contract. You basically have no choice, but I think this is something we should work together as a, as a group of creators together to say no to unfair terms. I think this is very important. Um, just to h mention some, some other creators in this, in this room is also, CISA also represent, I know it's Music Creators Forum, but I think it's also relevant to other creators like directors and screenwriters. And their rights in some legislative restrictions, all the rights are sometimes transferred to producers and also in the Netflix situation as well. I think in Korea, my colleagues uh, DGK and also the other uh, right holders are fighting also their rights to protect creators. I think that we are on the same boat, but more important thing is we need to educate the creators. So the, the pro brochure and the, the campaign that we work together with an a, a initiative called Your Music, Your Future International, this website includes a lot of information about buyout, what we should work together to understand more about your rights. So some of the key topics I included is what are total buyouts, what buyouts are becoming more prevalent, how buyout clauses work in con contracts to, to give people know what are these clauses, uh, the devil in the, in, in the details. Royalties and lump sum just mentioned by Professor Lee. Uh, weighting up the options, Vary, uh, various uh, law around this total buyout in, around the world, how creators can raise awareness for greater legal protections for their works. So these all very informative information can be found in this website. What, what we want to work together under this Your Music, Your Future International uh, campaign is we want to raise awareness support at national and regional level, like what we do together at the APMA seminars. Uh, add more creator uh, case studies. We need your voice because you can upload your situation in this website to tell us what we should be aware of in your situation. We en engage with the creators community around the world and then potential for national adaptations. If we are making this website in different languages already, uh, hopefully we'll have a Korean version and other a Asian language very soon. Um, pro pro potential linked up with audiovisual creators, just I mentioned earlier about working with other sectors because we're facing with similar uh, 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 issues. Um, I think um, we are working together in different level um, in, during COVID. Although we cannot do a physical uh, symposium, uh, we invited Beyond and also Shinichi Tokura, um, uh, our previous APMA chair, and Professor Lee to do an online copyright symposium focusing about this issue and want to raise awareness a bit about it. And in other part of the world, in Brazil, we also work together with the Brazilians uh, also on this topic uh, of, uh, of what we should do together to ensure uh, creators being aware of their, their rights. So um, we are working together around creators worldwide. We, the best idea is just like my, Professor Lee said, the Indian situation, great. Uh, I'm sure uh, my colleagues, uh, you have a chance to talk to my colleague, uh, Mayu, 
but he, he will tell you how it was before the amendment of the law and now after this amendment of the law, how creators can be protected. And it, it, did, not, uh, it did not affect at all the, the, the film industry in India. It's actually become stronger because the cre creators have more incentive to receive remunerations. They can have more way to sustain their living and they will more young creators can attract to this industry and do more greater creations. I think, um, I hope the other interested party will not look at it very shortly for immediate economic returns because we need to look broader. It is exactly, we need new bloods in this industry to create more new works. And I think India is an excellent example to show to the world that protection to creators will have great returns to the industry. So uh, lastly, I think we should um, work together, call for people, we, we should stand together. There are many creators in this room to work together to identify your rights and then to make sure we work together to do something about buyout. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. CSAC has been doing a lot of activities. I learned a lot from your comments. I hope that we could talk with uh, Professor Lee through Zoom, but we cannot do so. And I would like to ask the second panelist, Mr. Pakaki. Hello, everyone. I am a composer and also I am the vice president of Comca. So everyone uh, talked about their idea while sitting on the seat. So I'm going to also sit uh, on my seat and I may have my legs crossed. Um, and I'd like to ask for your understanding. Our awareness and knowledge on copyrights is important, but musicians do not have enough knowledge on copyright. They are just passionate about creating music and songs, especially when they are younger. I composed uh, some so songs. One of the songs is Beautiful World. I was looking at people in the subway and I thought that the world is led by each of the ordinary people and that's why I composed the song Beautiful World. And in the lyric, it says, we come together with beautiful people and let us create beautiful world all together. Uh, 20 years ago, I got a call. 20 years ago, my song was quite famous. And one of the singers said that in a hospital in Ulsan, they were using the melody of your song. and. Did they receive your permission to use the melody? And I didn't know about that. I heard nothing about it. Actually, I called the hospital that was using my melody without my permission at hospital. Actually, we have speakers and audience from abroad. Even the same Korean word can mean different things. Korean word kasim means both heart and breast. So these are the two meanings of the Korean word kasim. I called the hospital and I heard the coloring, the song. The, the song says, every we come together with our heart and we can create the beautiful world. And I didn't feel bad because I heard the melody melody from my song. Uh, After the coloring uh, ended, the hospital message was saying that this is the plastic surgery hospital. We're going to make you beautiful breasts. That was the commercial the hospital was making by using the lyric and melody of my song. The, by the Korean word kasim, I meant heart warm heart, but the hospital was the cosmetic uh, plastic surgery hospital, which was actually doing the surgery on the breast uh, of women. And my song was actually included in the textbook of middle school students' music classes, and my song 
along with the lyrics, was being used like a very beautiful song that can be even sung by children. But my song lyrics and the melody were being uh, used as a way to advertise the, the breast plastic surgery by the hospital. So I complained about this to the hospital, and the hospital stopped using my uh, lyric and melody, and I didn't take any legal action against it. So I felt that my songs are like my children. I have to know how my songs are being used by what kind of people. That's why I should have the right to protect my songs. That's why from that time on, I came to have great interest in the protection of copyrights. Actually, in the 1800s, Edison, the famous inventor, invented LP. So Edison developed the phonograph, and after 100 years, the technologies were developed, and in the digital era, we uh, saw the appearance of CDs. And after the analog development, we have experienced faster than expected development of technologies. We were listening to tape and CDs, but now we are downloading music, and we are listening to streaming services, metaverse market is opened, and NFT-based platforms and services are being created by using music and various creative content. It's really difficult to catch up with the fast speed of development of technologies. The same is true for broadcasting sector. In the past, people were usually watching TVs, but now people are using uh, OTT platforms to enjoy video content. And this content industry is growing across the online platform as well. And at this point of time, we are talking about the buyout contract. Most of the OTT platform providers are actually operating the platform by creating creating their own content. If I were an OTT platform operator, I may think that it is so cumbersome to receive permission from the copywriter or creator. So many OTT platforms want to use the copyrighted content and buy, buy signing, buy out contract with the creators. That's kind of enhancing the convenience of the OTT platform providers. And from my experience with my song, Beautiful World, I felt that once we create a song and if we sign such buyout contract, it means that you are going to give up on the next 70 years or 100 years regarding the use of your uh, copyright. So signing the buyout contract and giving up on your right is just like abandoning your own children. Then many people say that then you don't need to sign the buyout contract. If you don't sign the buyout contract, then the, that will be simple. But the problem is that sometimes the creators sign the buyout contract because they don't know what it is. And especially the young and new creators do not know well about what buyout contract means. And they don't know much about the legal or administrative terminologies and contracts. That's why many musicians and artists are deceived by people. And they signed the contract without knowing what the contract actually means. In many cases, the artists do not know about buyout contract. Sometimes, Artists sign the buyout contract um, with knowing about the contract because many OTT platform operators are working as operators and also at the same time as producers. The OTT platform providers have such high authority, strong authority, and they have great negotiating power. So if you are not an influential creator, if you are not a famous creator, then you know what buyout contract means, but you have no choice but to sign the contract 
contract with the OTT platform provider because you want to position yourself as a creator or artist. So in many cases, artists sign the buyout contract because they, they don't have any other option. Of course, there are artists who sign the buyout contract because they don't know about it. Whenever you sign contract, for example, when you sign the contract on insurance or cars, you call the insurance company, and the insurance company records a conversation with you. Did you hear the explanation about all the legal provisions and policy statements of this insurance? So insurance companies clearly notify what the insurance content is about when they're trying to finally conclude the insurance uh, uh, package with the buyer of the insurance. Then what about the copyright? Many of my friends sign the buyout contract, and they, when they signed the buyout contract, they didn't uh, have the enough information about it. And some of my junior singers or junior composers often share with me their experience where they actually signed such via contract uh, without knowing any unfair uh, elements of the contract. So in some sense, I understand their situation. And some artists sign the buyout contract, although they know what that contract means. But some of them may think that such buyout contract could be in some way helpful for them for them to grow as a creator. So I'm going to spend one more minute. Then the government can prevent the, the artists, uh, creators, from signing the buyout contract. Some of you may say this, but our parents were working even on Sunday, and we say, why are you going to the company on Sunday? Why can't you take some days off? But that is not possible because uh, if my if our fathers do not work on Sunday, uh, they will get laid off. So as time passes, the Labor Act or Employees Protection Act have been established. That's the governmental effort. So I hope that the government will come up with more legal policies and measures to protect the creators from uh, signing unfair buyout contract. And creators themselves should have uh, correct information and accurate knowledge about the buyout contract. So we need to prepare legal measures to prevent uh, any forceful and wrongful buyout contract between creators and the users. Actually, last but not least, the humanity has developed along with music. Music may be the largest industries of all, so in order to facilitate the growth of music industry, we have to invest in the protection of creators' rights. So far, we have been growing music, and music gives you the fruits, and buyout contract is like selling the tree itself. We, you have to sell the apples from the tree, but you are selling the tree itself. That's what it means when you sign the buyout contract, and I hope that we could bring that a future for all creators. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the very important comment. It was very interesting. I worked as a lawyer for 20 years, and now I am teaching students at law school. I worked a lot with the artists. Many artists sign contract, and they come to me and ask me about the content of the contract. And they always said, musicians don't read contract. They don't read contract and just sign on it. And one interesting aspect is that when we have an appointment with them, please come to us at 10 a.m., that they don't come at 10 a.m. They are not punctual because they have to sleep in the morning. 
예, 마지막으로 어, 멀리서 태국에서 오셨습니다. 태국음악자조건협회 회장님, 노타볼스 일초반 회장님 말씀해 주시죠. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me today. It's an, an honor for me to be here with all of you. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about the buyout situation in Thailand. Just a little bit, not much. Um, before I start, I want to make a note that in Thailand, the record company and the publishers are actually the same entity. From past to present, um, in Thailand, we have been encountered the buyout situations in many, many scenarios. Um, one, of the, one of the genres, we encounter the buyout situation in many, many scenarios and also many genres of music. But one of the genres of music that have been um, pretty common in the buyout is in the Thai country song genre. Um, I want to give you two examples of the buyout today. Um, a hugely successful and popular label publishers um, in Thailand has a policy to buy out all the songwriters who want to work for them. And if the songwriters doesn't agree to the buyout, then they just go and find another songwriters to work for them. That's one of the situation that happened. Um, this popular label slash publisher was once our member at MCT for a very, lot, very short time though, because once they learned that we have a 50-50 rule at, at our society and we are very strict about it, then, then they quickly resigned. Um, Another example that happened to me personally, I was hired by an advertising agency to compose a song for a very well-known fruit juice product in Thailand. Um, after I had completed the song, then the client approached me and asked to buy out all the rights to the song. Afterward, of course, I declined their request, but it took me a long time and a lot of effort to try to explain to them that the buyout is not necessary and it is not the right thing to do. Um, so why is the buyout practice is still happening in Thailand and I guess all over the world now? From the creator's point of view, um, especially in the Thai country genre, in Thailand, I think most of the songwriters and most of the composer that they, they are so used to this practice of buying out for many, many years, more, probably more than 30 years. And they also have the lack of the knowledge of music copyrights and they don't know what rights they have as songwriters and as composer. They didn't understand the benefits of keeping the rights of their songs. And also many of them were also afraid that if they refused to sell the rights, they wouldn't be hired for other jobs in the future. And for the clients and label publishers point of view, they believe that by buying out the rights, it would make it more convenient for them and also cutting out all the hassle of obtaining the license every time they want to use it so they can freely use the song whenever they want, wherever they want. And some of them, I would say some of them, not all of them, don't want to share the revenue with the songwriter just simply for selfish reason. We believe that the solutions, there are solutions to this problem though. Um, we believe that by educating both parties on the copyright issues, we can help 
um, may, it may not be eliminate the issue, but it can help everybody to understand what rights they have and what they should do with the copyright issue. Also by developing good relationships with one another in order to encourage open communication and minimizing the misunderstanding. That is also one of the key which I believe it is very important. Open communication and be honest with one another. On our end at MCT, as a CMO, we also have our duty as well. We have to keep on developing a more effective way and also a more convenient way for our clients to obtain license. So if our clients or if the publishers or if anyone knows how to obtain license and it is easy and it is convenient for everyone and with a reasonable licensing fee, then I think the buyout situation would, would improve in the future. Of course, I think it will take time and effort to accomplish these goals, but I, think, I, I truly think it is doable. Now, on a positive note, during the past three years since I have been a chairman at the MCT, there were three well-known Thai country music labels publishers who agreed to become a member at MCT. They were willing to accept our 50-50 rule, even though they had obtained their whole song catalog by buyout. They were willing to accept these terms because of our commitment to developing a good relationship with them, which lead to an honest and open communication with them and I believe that this is the first time that has ever happened in the history of MCT and also in the history of Thai music as well. So in summary, we believe that through raising awareness of the copyright issue, of the buyout issue, by educating all parties, including songwriters and all clients who want to obtain license, and honest and open communication as well, we can help to protect the copyright issue for our future generation. And at MCT, we, we also um, believe in our um, Your Music, Your Future campaign, which we have been promoting um, this campaign for a while now on our social media. And we are very committed to promoting this campaign, which is a very good com campaign um, in the future as well. And we believe that together we can make it a successful campaign and we will be able to um, improve the situation in Thailand. As we have already seen that progress has been made and we're going to try our best to improve the situation. Thank you very much. 네, 감사합니다. 우리 이제 박하키 의원님. Thank you so much. And the uh, Parkaki has also exceeding the time by two minutes. But the uh, Nupali Sri Chumkan, yes, you also kept the time by two minutes. Thank you so much. It would be also better if we also have their connections uh, with the professor from Hong Kong, but we could not. So I'd like to also ask some of the questions to the final panelists, so Notapo Sri Chongkan. In Thailand, I'm not really sure about the situations in the Thailand, but so I just want to know that, the, of course, could you just clarify the proportions that you're getting uh, for the, your revenues from your MCT in Thailand? Of course, the market, the music market is rapidly increasing in Thailand. But could you also share about how that has been urged to rapidly increase in the music industry in Thailand for the past few years? Yes, um, the music industry in Thailand, especially in the digital revenue, have been increased a lot. Um, during a couple years, um, the, this, this past couple years, during the COVID situation, the general collection has been very decreased because we cannot 
have any concerts and there are no events. But the revenue from digital have been double for the past two years already. So it is a very good sign for us. Um, now that the COVID situation have eased a lot, we believe that by the end of this year and also next year, the collection in uh, general revenue from concert and events will also increase as well. Probably next year, we hopefully that we hope that the revenue will be back to normal. But we we think the revenue from digital will keep growing and growing. Thank you very much. That's a very good news, and really looking forward to the getting the more revenues from the music industry in your country. So that the probably we hope that the Thailand could be the one of the model examples and countries in Asia. And um, Vice President Park Hak so your songs and melodies were being used as the coloring of a hospital. And what is your knowledge on the level of copyright protection in Korea in the music industry? Actually, there are business users and individual users of music content. Business users have higher awareness on the importance of copyright protection. And some years ago, illegal downloading was very common. People were thinking that we'd better just illegally download the content um, instead of just buying them for money. But nowadays, people have higher awareness that illegal downloading is uh, like a theft of the copyrighted work. And it cannot happen overnight. It takes time. It takes time to conduct such public campaign and uh, PR. Nowadays, many people are accustomed to paying money for downloading music content. According to the report uh, in the U.S., the level of copyright protection of Korea is ranked the seventh or eighth in the world. Actually, Korea is one of the developed countries in terms of the copyright uh, protection and awareness on the copyright protection. So I want to tell, say, say more. Actually, I think the buyout contract is very important because in the case of buyout contract, it's very difficult to reach consensus because we have the conflict of interest. And as for buyout contract, I think that the government should intervene in the buyout issues. Actually, the European uh, Union is making efforts to solve the such problems through laws and regulations. In the case of the US, they put this as individual personal matters. But from CSAC, in Asia, there are talks about fair remuneration and equitable um, guarantee of equip, equitable uh, royalty. And what is the trend of laws and regulations in Asian countries regarding this? I, I guess you, you just find out from uh, Professor Lee's uh, study, um, in Asia Pacific, only a few countries have this kind of measures. Um, every time there is a copyright uh, legislative review, we also urge the government to have this opportunity to change the law to strengthen the protections of their uh, rights to make sure the creators are being protected. But um, many of them, they are strongly influenced by some other technology company, which is something that's why we are calling creators together to make our voice louder as well so that whenever there's op opportunity to make changes in law, then it's not just the voice of this big technology company can be heard by the government. The creators together in the same voice can be also very loud to make sure this is heard. I, I, I repeat my example in India because it was really, really bad, I can say, when the Bollywood movie industry was too strong in India. Only if the creators are standing together and they're the country, their government 
will be listening. And then that's why this uh, remuner remuneration rights was guaranteed to creators was finally put in law to protect it. It's changed the situation entirely. So I think um, it can be working in one country. I'm sure that will work in other country if our, we are standing together to make our, our voice being heard. Yes, uh, in that regard, CSAC will play a more important role. Actually, we are three minutes behind the schedule. I wish I had more time, but we will have to conclude the section one, and I will meet with you in the second section. Thank you. Thank you, moderator and all the panelists, for your productive discussions on stage. Thank you so much. 발표는 모두 잘 들으셨나요? 저희 다음 세션으로 넘어가기 전에 잠시 20분간의 휴식 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. 루비의 다과가 준비되어 있으니 즐거운 담소 나누시면서 즐겨 주시기 바랍니다. 다음 순서인 사적 복제 보상금 제도 세션은 20분 후인 4시에 다시 시작하도록 하겠습니다. I hope you enjoy the session. We will now have a short break. We we'll have prepared some coffee and snacks at the lobby, so please feel free to use this time to have a productive conversation with the fellow participants. Thank you so much for your cooperation. We'll see you again at 4 p.m.
휴식 시간 잘 보내셨나요? 저희 두 번째 세션, 다음 세션을 재개하도록 하겠습니다. Hope you enjoyed the break. We'll now move on to the next session. 계속해서 좌장이신 홍승기 교수님께서 진행해 주시겠습니다. Our moderator, Professor Hong Sun Gi, will continue leading the discussion. 교수님 시작 부탁드립니다. Professor, you may have the floor. Yeah. I'd like to start the second session. Please allow me to introduce the presenter and panelists. The presenter will be Professor Lee Dae-hee from Korea University. We will be having Ariane Molema from Netherlands, Vice Chair of CIAM. For the second panelist, we will be joined by Satoshi Watanabe, the Chair of CISAC, Asia Pacific of the JASRAC of Japan. And we will be also joined by Lee do Creator and Board Member of Kamka. And the last but not least, we have the Puri Mayuru from India, the creator and board member of IPRS. First of all, Professor E, regarding the private copying levy, it's a very key priority and the challenge that we may adopt or not within Korea. And sometimes, if you look at other countries like the Franks and Park chan the movie director, is known to have some receive some of the fund like support in France. So like there are a lot of the overseas news whether we can really fully enforce and protect the private copy levy or not. So that's till we are discussing whether we can fully adopt the private copy levy or not for Korean case. In the street guard, yes, you have a lot of the pages for your presentation, but please keep the time within 20 minutes. Thank you very much, and I am Professor Lee, as introduced before. First of all, regarding the private copying levy, as you are well aware, this is the system for the media or devices, the system it's providing a certain amount of the remunerations for the creators. But when it comes to the private copying levy, as mentioned earlier, this is exception from the violations of the copyrights. But when it comes to the analog era, the roles of the private copying levy was well established by fulfilling its functions so far, actually from the past. But when it comes to the time, since the 1960s and until the 2000s with the mass adoptions and utilizations of the digital devices, and the private copying levy system is known to have the very transitions from the past and nowadays. About since 2009 in Korea, regarding the private copying levy, but also the public, the copying, and the private copying levy would have some exceptions from the public use in some cases. But when it comes to the exceptions, and the copying, the private copying from the copying machine still, so far, are two years so absolutely to be considered. But unfortunately, the cost that we are actually getting is even less than the 100 million one when it comes to the amount of the, of the renum, remunerations from the private copy levy system. So when it comes to the violating the copy, the right holders, we are going to consider the issues and the scope within the system. If you look at the some case in Australia, like the UK and the US and Australia, and they don't really have the private copying levy system in those countries. But when it comes to Australia, when it comes to the educational institutions, they are also have some cases. If you look at some academic institutions as of the 2022, per capita, 
I mean, for each student, the amount per full-time student, it's about the $13 when it comes to the collections of the fees for the private copying levy system in Australia. It's about 11,000 Korean won that the collection of the fee for the Cal copying, the private copying levy is being paid for each student. So that when it comes to the total amount, it can exceed the much higher than the, the hundreds of the millions of Korean won. We see that actually the amount and quantity of the private copying levy is massive from, from the copying machines. If you look at the if you look at the cases in the college or the high schools, there are actually many cases when it comes to private copying. And in collecting those the levy from the private copy, it only costs about 800 won, which is even less than one dollar. If we compare the amount of levy between Korea and other countries like Australia, and still we have a long way to go further. So probably we have the twice the differences in terms of the, the private copying levy between Australia and Korea. On that note, what we have to look at here is that at this point of the time, the private copying within the high schools are being allowed it. But for Australia, the private copying levy is being paid. Well, that levy is not being fully paid in Korea. If you look at the case, the chorus, the FTA, the confirmation letter, upon the official letter and the document, we only see that the sum of the scope is being applied for the private copying and the private copying levy. So ultimately, when it comes to private copying, especially from the copying machines, but when it comes to the digital era with the massive storage system or devices which can lead to the massive copying or the centers or places using the copying machines, still we see that a lot of the different ways in which that the copy holder right, um, the rights are being a lot excluded. Of course, it's not really possible that we can make the claims for every place when it comes to making the levy from all the places for their private copying. But to prevent those, the rights to be violated for the copyright holders, we also need to see that there are some ways in which that the sum of the copyrights could be protected. So we may impose the payment systems which can be already equipped inside of the copying machine for the private copying. The importance and necessity of the private copying and the levy is well known and explained. And ultimately for the private copying, unlike the, the real objectives and the goals as we want, so we want to see that the economic damage are to be further enforced, but, not, um, but it's very different from the reality as we see that a lot of the damages are being applied on the copyright holders. And if you look at the cases in the countries, like more than 30 countries, including Japan and Europe, they are also conducting some of the survey and the questionnaires on the private copying levy system. If you look at the case in the U.S., the levy is relatively small compared to other countries. And if you look at the country uh, like the Germany, the amount was regulated and stipulated, but with the revision on the law and act, the amount could be also flexible from that time. As you can see the graph here, per capita, the levy revenues, when it comes to the private copying levy, are being indicated here. As we mentioned before, the francs, the levy revenues per capita is relatively higher. It's about the higher than the 40 billion 
euros in total. It means the revenues are being more collected from the levy, from the private copying. About one decade ago, when I visited Germany, I saw that one of the colleagues tried to buy some iP iPad and the very stale, the detailed statements on the iPad were also containing some information regarding the private copying and the levy. In case of France, from the smartphones, you see that the private copying levy is well stated. So in this regard, you can see that the regulatory authorities are being responsible for collecting the levy from private copying. These are the tables to really indicate the figures from WIPO. From the table, you can see that actually the revenues are being collected in francs. And likewise, you see that I have collected some of the data for the amount, like from the audio or the video as the sources. When it comes to the types of the private copying and to the copy right holders, and there's the creators, you see that the allocations, when it comes to the category in which that they get some the f certain amount of the collected levy and all the category. On the map, you cannot refer to that the very different regions with showing the amounts of the per capita private copying levy. As mentioned before, the francs is the ranking number one when it comes to the amount of the per capita levy. In Japan, recently, the country has adopted the recording levy system. And after the one of the revisions on the act, the probably we see that the private audiovisual recording and the levy system will be fully implemented. So that probably we can get to know more information while we are joined by a, the panelists from Japan as well. When it comes to audio recording, and the recordings on the audio devices were being actually collected. It's about a very long time ago, about this, since 1995. So the private copying and the levy was also implemented in case of the audio recording. But nowadays, the amount and the priority from the audio recording is not really relatively higher from by comparing to the, the figures in the past, as with the very little demands. And we need to consider very different ways for the collecting the levy. So storage devices and the media are definitely need to be considered, or the source or the beneficiaries or recipients are to be also further considered and more additions, like we also need to consider that a lot of the information, like the subject or the payers, device distributors, manufacturers, importers, are to be also the stakeholders when it comes to the paying or receiving the private copying levy upon the information here. Then, of course, the CMO is to be also considered at the same time. And ultimately, all these are to be allocated and distributed in a fair manner, of course. 5% or 10% from the total amount or the levy could be also allocated or donated to encourage or nurture the personnel or the creators for their more skills. So there is a term that digital right management, DRM, is the one of the keywords in, in which that, that we can also consider some of the ways for imposing or making some of the negative aspects like others may assume to the copyright holders. So there may be some unclear understandings whether we can fully implement 
in a positive manner or, or in a negative manner for enforcing the copyright and the copyright owners. But what i like to highlight here is that from the DRM, there may be some parts that are not being fully copied for their private uses, but from the copying machines or the media and a lot of the devices, you don't really have a lot of devices with a DRM. If you buy the one gigabyte or the USB, you don't really have the systems for the DRM nowadays. The fact here is that we are going to see that the copying devices and the copying media, like for instance, like memory stick or the memory, the chip inside the, your computers, don't really have the DRM nowadays. We are going to see the spectrum and scope while we can really actually proceed for the private copying throughout the, these different media and devices. So still, there are some ways that we cannot be really fully avoided from those private copying. But when it comes to the systems for the private copying the levy, the amount of the levy seems to be also probably known that that amount is to be paid by consumers, as some people may think. But when it comes to the device, for instance, for instance like HP, the printer, the blue line shows the amount or the cost of the HP printer. But if you look at the, the very the dark blue line on the very bottom, is actually the levy, the private copying levy amount. There are some countries which are imposing private copying levy, or there are some other countries without the private copying levy. But if you look at the, the Germany, there are some countries while don't really have the private copying levy. So what is the, the cost gap here, the price gap here? And still, if you look at the left and the right hand side, the countries without the private copying levy are selling much higher price on the HP printer, while some of the countries with selling the less price with private copying levy. Likewise, you also need to compare some of the differences. And for instance, for instance, this is one of the device called iPad, the 64 gigabyte. Whether to impose or not the cop copying levy for the private users. We are going to see some the market situations as well as the differences depending on the degree of competitions. We are going to see that whether that device would be very the newest model or not. But still, at this point of the time, as we ever refer to the graphs, those levies are not being paid by consumers, but still, it may be also very beneficial in some cases because actually the users, consumers, are the ones who are using the, the media or the audio or the video, the sources for their private users, of course. So when it comes to the private copying levy, and if we enact that the topic into our law or regulation, and while acknowledging on the private copying levy or recording device or media are to be well considered and at the same time the operator or the persons who is operating the copying machine are the ones who has who have to pay the private copying levy as we are concerned in conclusion, in Korea, we have some the fees that we have to pay for use. It's a very relatively reasonable and the lower compared to other countries. If you look at the case in Australia, and still we see that there are some the relatively the lower price than other countries. And the most of the private copying levy is being collected from university and the lectures and classes. That amount could be like 2 billion won in total. And the private copying levy from the copying machines is only above the 100 million Korean won in total. It's a relatively smaller than other countries, but if you look at the general college or university in Australia, they're absolutely paying the fully for the private copying levy. So far, we have the talked and the look at some cases in Korea. But still, some the creators and the copyright holders are actually to sacrifice themselves 
because their rights not being fully implemented and protected. The coffee, the coffee in Korea is less than about the 4,000 won. The private copying levy collected from the university, it's only 800 won per year for each student. It's even less than just one cup of coffee. So with the, with the enactment on the law and the act, since 1956 and the revisions and still, and during the 1980s with some of the pressures on the trade between the Korea and the US, and we have our transition period into imposing like the private copying levy. When it comes to considering our phenomenon with the level of the K-pop and our varied repetitions around the world, we also need to actually take a leap forward, like the paying lawyer tills or imposing the private copying levy, and etc. For the private copying levy and from private copying are to be fully considered. And now if you look at the case in the US, the CCC, the copyrights of the center is strongly imposing for each person to pay even one US dollars if they want to print out just one page of the some copyrighted paper or work. So in Korea compared to other countries, a lot of the copyright holders not being fully pro the paid and we have seen that they have under um, the went a lot of the sacrifice while their rights are not being the fully prevented. So likewise, I want to also highlight that it is a really high time for Korea to fully consider and apply for the private copying levy, like considering the DRM or any the ways in which those the levy could be imposed or paid by consumers. We also need to see some further improvements. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your great presentation, Professor Lee. And now the levy is being also the mostly imposed by consumers and customers. And probably, as I remember, about the five years ago, actually, when we had a symposium, that theme at the time was also a private copying levy. And now we'll be also the joined by one of the experts from Europe. And I'd like to time to invite Ariane Molema from Netherlands, the Vice Chair of CIAM. Thank you. Um, thanks, everyone. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, as already mentioned. I'm honored to be here. I have to apologize for my voice. Uh, normally, I don't sound this rock and roll, but the jet lag has taken its toll. So I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> and you're with me. Um, by no means, thank you for calling me a private copying expert, but I think there are people in the room who are way more expert than I am. So I'll just give you a short overview of some numbers and figures in, uh, in Europe. Um, I'm a composer myself, a songwriter. So I'm, I'm affected by private copying. I will tell you a little bit about what's happening in Europe, uh, what the numbers are, and what does it mean for creators. So first of all, we have uh, a lot of countries in Europe that have private copying. I think almost all countries except two the UK and Malta have private copying laws, and most of them also have some sort of remuneration system. So all the blue countries are countries that pay out private copying levies. It's a very strong system in Europe, and it's based on the Berne Convention. It's based on uh, Europe. Europe is a, a legal, uh, well, mess, I would say. It's, it's so many countries, so we have the European Commission trying to harmonize law in that regard. And in 2001, there was uh, a directive, the InfoSoc, and that sort of started off the harmonization of private copying law uh, and made the exception possible. So it basically means that right holders should be fairly compensated if there is an exception uh, being made on the copyright law. That's the basis. And every, or at least almost, most countries have built that into their national law. Okay, so what are we talking about history-wise, um, in 1966 Germany started with the first lawsuit and they sort of started the whole process off to make sure that private copying happened in Europe. After that the rest of Europe followed, um, basically of course with VHS and tape 
uh, the usual things where it was easy to copy and for consumers very visible that you made a copy for your own private use. That started up the private copying levies. And since the 2000s, there has been, of course, a shift to digital with all problems uh, that come with that because it's harder to explain to consumers. Uh, it's more technical, the discussion, is this a copy, is this not a copy? So the fight has been slightly different, but um, the things that are being levied, like hard drives, smartphones, everybody has a smartphone, so if that's levied, it's a, it's a huge amount of money. And it is a huge amount of money, because in Europe it's over a billion euros on private copying. So that's quite substantial, and that is something that really helps us creators. And even in that case, 13% of our income, if you're paying creators, comes from private copying. So that's substantial. And uh, Benjamin mentioned yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, that you know, it's important to diversify as a creator, as a collecting society, to have different sources of income. Private copying is a very steady source of income in Europe and a fairly big one. It's the fifth highest royalty category, as you can see, we have broadcasting, background, live performance, online. And then the fifth biggest source of income is private copying money. So, as I said, it's very substantial. It's, it's of big use to us as creators. And the beauty of it is that in COVID times, um, uh, it has proven that it's, it's a steady stream. It's a very steady stream of income. So. We all know that uh, live music was not possible for the last two and a half years, so that income stream dipped in all the collecting societies and all the creators that write for live performances had problems. Private copying boomed, or well, at least it said steady and it boomed because people bought stuff, bought iPhones. So it very, was very useful in COVID times, and that also proves the point that Benjamin made, that it's wise to diversify your rights portfolio because sometimes money streams will go up and down and it's very uh, handy to have you know, a steady stream. It's been growing um, steadily. We have ups and downs, spikes, but basically it's still a growing amount of money. And to give you some examples about the amounts, uh, I've put some countries together. My country, the Netherlands, has around 33.5 million euros per year on private copying, which is substantial but it's nothing if you compare it to France. So there are differences. And to show you per tech-savvy person, which means a person in the Netherlands who owns an iPad and, an, and a laptop, um, in the Netherlands you would pay around four euros of private copying levies. So if you buy a laptop, you pay a couple of euros on top of that. and All combined together, it's around four euros. It's not as high as it is in Germany or in France or in Sweden, um, but still it's fairly fair amount of money, and in Germany it's, I believe, it's one of the highest numbers. So this gives you an overview of the amounts that are going around in Europe. So the question for me was, um, why is it important? What does it, what does it do for creators? And there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. First of all, um, socio-cultural funds. You mentioned it also, Professor Lee, but Lots of European societies have uh, uh, SOCU funds, socio-cultural, whereby they spend money on uh, talent development, helping creators, helping younger creators, uh, promote cultural diversity, have uh, pension funds for creators. And a lot of the times they're being funded by private copying monies also. A good example is France, whereby 25% of their private copying money goes directly into their cultural funds which means, in the case of France, around 70 million euros. I don't know how much that is in Korean won, but it's substantial, I can tell you that. So, these private copying uh, funds, they create opportunities for creators to develop themselves, to be helped, to build retirement funds, to promote themselves. It's very useful, it's very helpful, because as a young, talented creator, you want to have a stage, you want to have the ability to perform, you want to be coached, and you want your society to help you with that. So that's one of the reasons uh, the private copying is important. Another one, as I mentioned, is the steady stream that it is. Uh, I cannot stress enough that COVID times have been hard on all of us, and especially European societies have a lot of um, 
income that dipped in COVID times. So it was very helpful that we still had a lot of private copying monies. And finally, I've been told that, um, for instance, SEM, a uh, society from Cabo Verde, when they found it, they immediately got private copying funds um, when they signed reciprocity agreements. So it's helpful for new societies because it's instantly something that comes your way and thereby helping creators. So that's the importance of private copy copying. And um, let me see. There, of course, are challenges in Europe. As I mentioned, uh, the shift to digital has been challenging, explaining to people what's been happening. We have pushback from industry because industry never wants to pay. They want to keep the tariffs as low as possible. Um, but there has been, I don't know the name of the lawsuit, but there has been a lawsuit um, whereby the difference in price between different web shops uh, was even, was more money than the private copying levy. So for instance, if I would buy a smartphone on Amazon and I would look up Amazon and the price would be 600 euros, and I would look up the same smartphone at another web shop, it would be 590 euros. And the difference between those two, that's more money than you would pay as a private copying fee. So that became clear, and therefore it, the tariffs we're talking about are very small, so relatively small. The consumer is not affected that much. He's not sort of, because that's always the argument, right? The consumer has to pay, and has to pay a lot for it. And it's just not the case. And next to that, as we've seen in the, in, the, in the graph, it's also way less than VAT, than value-added taxes. So basically, for the consumer, um, it doesn't matter that much. For the creator, it really matters. It's a lot of steady income. It's a huge amount of income. And there has also been a study uh, that, you know, it would be better, there was an industry party that said it would be better if there were no private copying levies, um, because that would enhance creativity. And I'm always a little bit suspicious when an industry partner tells me what enhances cre creativity. So uh, apparently they used the wrong numbers and it was not the case because in the long term, as a creator, you would need a financial basis so you can do what you want to do, create music. So uh, that's basically uh, it. There are, of course, discussions on what devices it applies to, but um, you've heard a lot about that. Mr. Lee's speech. So I think, thank you, and if there are any questions, probably we'll be uh, later on handling them. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Actually, 13% of the uh, creator's income come from the pri private copying levy and also France is using quite a large proportion of private copying levy for the development of social culture aspects. That was very impressive. And the Berne Convention was mentioned. It was actually, it actually began from the end of the 19th century. And at that time, Japan was the only country that participated in Berne Convention. So, I personally respect Japan in terms of its modernization effort, in terms of its joining of Berlin Convention. And uh, Mr. Satoshi Watanabe, could you go ahead? Uh, thank you, Professor Hong. Uh, very nice to have this opportunity to share experience. As you mentioned that uh, <clears throat> Uh, we had uh, just like uh, has an opportunity to share private copying uh, practices maybe five years ago <clears throat> and uh, uh, right holders group are making all efforts to improve the situation but unfortunately basically the same situation but uh, we'd like to review uh, what uh, the current issue private copying remuneration experience in the country and the follow-up survey in the Asia Pacific region The copyright law of Japan was amended uh, to introduce the remuneration system for uh, audio and video recording in 1992, the 30 years in existence. And uh, this happened, uh, the right holders group uh, had been campaigning for introduction of the system uh, since 1980s. 
And, uh, but actually, uh, our amendment uh, uh, relies following legislation of uh, U.S. Audio Home Recording Act. That, that was 1992, in the same year. So immediately after the Japanese government uh, decided to uh, amend the copyright law, the rate, as you see, the audio, uh, that's a percentage of a retail price of a certain uh, percentage of retail price, and the video, that's uh, also a certain percentage of the uh, list price. And uh, uh, the devices, as you see, that's uh, DCC, DAT, MD. DAT with the forecast uh, uh, device uh, to charge for private copying. And the video, DCCR and uh, VHS, and the media as the tapes and the discs uh, for the use uh, list price of that. Here is the uh, total collections uh, since 1994. And uh, as you see, the uh, red uh, laugh is audio. And uh, the first part is uh, we, uh, private copying uh, the collections more from audio. And at the year of two, uh, 2000, I think that the highest, the amount is uh, 28, nearly 30 million uh, US or Euro. The current exchange rate is almost the same, and, and, uh, but that's highest time. And we uh, collected more from uh, a video, but as you see, they've fallen down and uh, it's nearly to zero. Why? <clears throat> uh, audio, uh, I will talk later, that uh, only a, a cabinet order designated uh, uh, media and the devices are subject to private copying. And uh, targeted de devices are uh, falling down, the sales are falling down. In the video, uh, the Supreme Court uh, decision in 2012, that's the Toshiba cases, the right holders group uh, uh, lost that case, unfortunately, because of the, that devices were not uh, out of the, at that time, target uh, devices for private copying. So that is why uh, video private copying uh, collecting agency uh, dissolved, unfortunately, after the loss of the Supreme Court. <clears throat> what are the issues of uh, Japanese private copying system? One, the scope of compensation uh, stipulated by cabinet order. Uh, that is why the uh, the, this to specify new uh, audio video recording device uh, by the uh, cabinet order. And uh, cabinet order has not extended to uh, designate uh, uh, additional devices and the media for many years. So this is uh, one uh, issue. And another issue is the man manufacturers of specified recording machines are obligated to cooperate and not the obligation to pay the private copying, as Professor mentioned. That's an issue. And the collecting, uh, comp but they are just not a, a party to pay the compensation. So the idea is the ultimate a consumer uh, making private copying. So they are responsible. But in practice, very difficult. Uh, so these are two issues. Cabinet order designation and uh, manufacturers are parties only to cooperate in uh, royalty payment. Uh, by uh, remuneration payment. 
So uh, 2020, uh, International Society, CISAC, and uh, Mechanical Rights Society Organization, BM, and the Dutch private copy survey company, Twist Copy, joint study conducted and uh, categorize the situation in the Asia-Pacific uh, territories. As you see, no private copying uh, exception, as you see uh, these countries. And uh, there is a uh, uh, private copying exception, but no remuneration system So several countries. And also uh, private copying uh, remuneration system, but without uh, a collection and the distribution uh, mechanism. So actual collection distribution had not introduced. And uh, it's only Japan, a private copying exception and the mechanism and the collection and distribution mechanism. That was the 2020 uh, survey, it's only two years ago. But since uh, APMA, uh, prioritized the, this issue. It's very important for creators, and, uh, as Ariane mentioned, it's 13% of uh, CMO's collection, and especially a pandemic time, it's very important for uh, creators' uh, revenue. And uh, we decided to reinvestigate uh, the issue well, uh, I have not received all responses from uh, uh, participating uh, societies, but uh, the re uh, response will be the, almost the same. But uh, this time we asked, uh, are you receiving royalties from uh, private copying royalties from other societies? And yes, and from uh, mainly from European societies and uh, music societies administered mechanical rights, then they are receiving royalties, just like receiving a good amount of royalties, uh, several thousand uh, euro or dollars a uh, year, yeah. and uh, I assume Komuka is receiving, and also uh, no music societies, uh, script writers and directors society, the audio visual rights societies, receiving private copy royalties, a good amount of uh, that. So, uh, this is the situation, and uh, what the latest development is the uh, right holders uh, campaigning under the current situation, and some uh, progress made that uh, Japanese cabinet uh, decided to designate Blu-ray disc that broadcast uh, digital to digital broadcast, but as you see, it's not a quite limited uh, target. So, right holders group thinks it's a time to redesign the private copying system in Japan. So, a uh, long way to go, but uh, it is time to review this issue and to share the experience uh, with Asia Pacific societies to uh, priorities, prioritize this issue again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Satoshi Watanabe. You also have very good explanations of the cases from Japan. So, Ido Yang, please proceed your comments. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am a composer of Korea. My name is Lee do -yeon. I am uh, the director at Comca. I want to make comments from the perspective of a creator. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to give you my opinion as a creator. Private copying levy system was already explained by the professor. Actually, a copyright levy is typically attached to certain products like equipment or media that can serve to reproduce audio, audiovisual, or textual materials such as music, 
films or books. I am a lyricist. So regarding this issue, I want to make comments from music creator's perspective. In Korea, we don't have private levy system in place. First, let's have a look at related laws and regulations of Korea. First of all, this is Article 30 of Korean Copyright Act. It says that for reproduction for private use, it shall be permissible for a user to reproduce in private without any commercial purposes a work already made public within the limit of personal, family, or the equivalent usage. This provision does not mention uh, remuneration at all. So this is a bit disappointing from the creator's perspective. And this law talks about the private use and the scope of private use is not clear. For example, if I have an MP3 file, I just want to give this MP3 file to my friend. This is not for making profit. And my friend, again, gives that MP3 file to another friend. If multiple number of friends share the MP3 file of music content, does it private you, is it private use or is it illegal sharing of file? So it's unclear. Also, if we listen to music through the file received from my friend without using official music streaming platform, if we don't choose to pay money to download music if we just depend on the illegally downloaded file to listen to music, then that will hamper the development of music industry. And if the activities of friends who share such illegally downloaded file with each other uh, is no longer just private use, but it is a very serious uh, problem because it will prevent the development of uh, music industry. So I think this is something very unfair for creators because such an activities actually restrict the right of the creators. And I think that um, the, uh, the private copy in this uh, aspect actually infringes the right of the creators. This is Article 23 of Korea's Constitution, which is the upper law of copyright law. Number one, it says, the right of property of all citizens shall be guaranteed, and the content and limitations shall be determined by act, and the exercise of property rights will conform to the public welfare, and exploitation, use, or restriction of private property from public necessity and compensation, therefore, shall be governed by act. So this law says that we will protect the property rights, but it shall conform to the public welfare. And Article 23 says that it guarantees property rights and it will give remuneration to the copyright holders. But if you look at the copyright law, Article 30, it says that private copying is allowed and no remuneration will be paid to the copywriter or creator. Then there is contradiction between the Constitution, Article 23, and the copyright law, Article 30. Then who is going to make re re compensation uh, to the copywriter and creator? One professor took a $20 um, money from his wallet and said, who wants this money? Many students raised their hands. And the professor said, actually uh, squeezed the, the money and then asked the students, so this is a dirty uh, money. Who wants this? Most of the students raised their hands. The professor then put the money in on the floor and stepped on it. He put dirt on it. He actually tear the money and asked the students, who, who wants this? Many students still raise their hands. What does that mean? This is a matter of value. There is the permanent value in the money. The same is true for music. Music has such value. 
I'm sorry. 제가 지금 보상금 얘기를 하고 있지만 I'm talking about remuneration for creators. This is not just a matter of money, but this is a matter of value. 음악의 가치가 What is the value of music? If we don't have private copying levy, that means that we are actually undermining the value of music. Actually, private, cop private copying has actually made music something that no one owns it or no one created it. If we don't have music, what will happen to the world? If there's no music, there will be no music users. If there's no music, no private copying will take place. Beautiful music gives condolences to the people. The beautiful music heals our scars. And those music were created by our copywriters, by our creators. Creators made such music, and why can't we protect the rights of the creators? We should protect the rights of the creators so that they could create even more beautiful music. There are people who create music, and there are people who listen to music. Both creators and consumers of music are important. Music needs a audience, music needs consumers, and we need to share the value of music all together. We have to respect the value of music. We should, we deserve respect. That's why we have to pay the proper level of remuneration to the copyright holders. And with the digital technology development, private copying will increase. And it is important that we respect creators, respect musicians as the holders of the copyrights. We should not exclude creators from this discussion. As a creator of music, as a copyright holder, I urge that we should amend the Korean copyright law. We should protect the copyright holders, and we should make the uh, un we should make fair re remuneration for musicians, so that our musicians can concentrate on creating ma magnificent works. In 2019, Korea tried to amend the copyright law, but it failed. From now on, we will have to continue providing uh, valid legal grounds for amendment, and if necessary, we will have to make the case of uh, contradiction. So there was the contradiction between the Constitution Law Article 23 and the Copyright Law Article 30. And we should learn from CSAC member states. All member states, please support us and please give us your um, support and encouragement so that we can uh, achieve the amendment of the Copyright Act. I would like to take this opportunity to emphasize the importance again that we need to protect the rights of the creators and protect the value of music. Thank you. Actually, um, we're talking about uh, the contradiction of constitutional law and copyright law. Actually, private copying started from the analog era when we were copying music with uh, the analog tapes. Actually, we have to capture private copying to get the levy. And actually, in the past, it cost a lot to capture the private copying behavior. So there was a student girl who I met in the bus station. And I asked her, who do you like? And she said, I like a certain musician. And then I copied the music of that musician in a tape and gave her the tape. This is also private living. And now we're living in the digital era. It is easier for us to capture private copying because we can use digital technology. And nowadays, digital private copying exists, and we have the original um, work as well. And regarding private copy, there are countries that adopted the private copying levy system to protect the creators. And um, Ms. Doyon Lee made a very important comment.
Now it's time to invite Puri Maru from India, who has also waited a long time as the final panelist. So could you also share your comments? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Komka, Apma, and CSAC, and all my esteemed panelists. Thank you very much for being here. Thank all of you uh, for being here for such a long day, and uh, this whole learning session has been going on, and, and you're so patient, and you're so kind. Uh, lovely people, all of you, and I also want to thank the translator who's doing a fantastic job here. So cheers to you. Um, uh, I'll start off with a small story. Um, there's two people, a nice couple in America, say, Jack and Jenny. Jenny wants to discover herself. She says, I want to travel to India because India is the seat of spirituality. She comes to India. And Jack is not so much interested. And after a few months, he gets a call from Jenny. And Jenny says, I found. I found everything. I found all my answers. And he said, where? She says, so oh, it's up, up in the north in Himalayas. You come to Delhi. Then you take a bus. Then you travel for 20 hours. Then you climb up a big trek. Come on top of the mountain. On top of the mountain, there's a cave. There's a light coming inside the cave. And there is a guru. There is a pandit. And he knows everything. He knows all the answers to the world. So he says, so what did you find? Jenny says, no, you have to do your own journey. I can't tell you. You have to come on your own. And she keeps the phone. Now Jack gets very excited. He takes the next flight out of LA, flies 30 hours, comes to Mumbai, uh, Delhi, comes to Delhi, takes a bus, tra travels another 20 hours. Then he starts climbing the Himalayas. And then there is a snowstorm, there is rain, and he's climbing and he's climbing, his clothes are torn, he's got bruises everywhere, and after two days he reaches the top of the mountain, he sees the cave, and on the cave he sees a light coming from inside, and he goes inside, and he sees the guru is sitting, and he says, oh guru, you know everything, you know all the answers to the world, please tell me, what is the meaning of life? And the guru says, a teacup. And Jack loses it. Jack says that I came all the way from the US, 30 hours in the flight, 20 hours in the bus, 22 days climbing the mountain, I've got bruises, my clothes are torn, and you're telling me that the meaning of life is a teacup? The guru looked up and said, okay, then maybe it's not a teacup. The, <laughs> the purpose of this story is that I'm sitting here and I'm feeling like that guru because I don't know much about private levy, and in India, uh, uh, it is almost non-existent. I was going to make a beautiful PowerPoint uh, presentation for you all uh, about how private levy is in India, but then all the slides would be blank, because it does not exist. We don't know about it. We don't know anything. We, we haven't really worked on that area. Yes, as our copyright law was amended in 2012, our chairman, uh, Mr. Javed Akhtar, he fought. He was a member of parliament at that time in 2012. And he gave a very interesting speech. And he worked very hard to make sure that the, the right to royalty of creators becomes an inalienable right. So you cannot separate the right to royalty. Even if I want to. Um, even if I want to give out my right to royalty. Like in previous session, we were talking about the, uh, the moral rights, whether they are alienable or not, whether it is possible for a creator to give away their moral right. But it should not be allowed, because the law of the land is bigger than any understanding between two people. And this, I was discussing in lunch, and I was telling my uh, colleagues that whatever is, is the, the different framework of legal structure in every country, the spirit of the law is same everywhere. The spirit of the law is that whoever creates something should be compensated for that. And that, I think, uh, private levy is going to be very important in India. Um, in India, people don't understand, the, the producers, the music labels, the uh, uh, you know, people who have the money, they always say that, oh, copyright means right to copy. But right to copy, not freely. You have to pay something because the creator really puts in so much effort in creating. Traditionally, in India, creators have died poor. Creators, uh, writers, musicians, artists, they are supposed to be poor. They are supposed to, we have romanticized the poverty of the creator in India. 
and I'm, I've been fighting for it since last whatever, how many ever years I've been working in the Writers Association and in IPRS. And I've been telling creators that remove this idea of being poor and stop romanticizing it. Why can't authors, composers, creators wear good clothes, wear branded shoes, walk out proudly without being apologetic about it? What do we owe to the society except our music? We don't owe anything else. The society owes us apt and fair compensation for that. Now, keeping in mind that this is going to be a big, uh, tough uh, trouble for us when it comes to India and we start fighting for it, I'm already making a lot of notes here and it's really very helpful to me. And I know that these are the questions that are going to be asked to us, whether, whether this private copy um, levy is fair, uh, how, can, how can creators tax uh, manufacturers? But then in India, we do have a system of tax uh, deduction at source. It's called TDS, and nobody objects to that. So it shouldn't be a problem uh, if creators are also uh, you know, taxing the, the manufacturers. And it's, it's very good to create, it's very good to collect the tax or the levy at the source itself, because later on, who knows? The further away it goes, the further away from us it goes. We, we cannot really control that. So, uh, is it fair? Is it, how, how is it going to be equal? Will it be more favoring the popular artists? Is, is, is the distribution going to be in such a way that it will be more favoring to the popular artists and maybe a sample size will not be collected from everybody? Should it be equitable distribution? Should it become... So these are all the questions which are going to come and I'm already anticipating this in the, in the next round of meetings. I'm, I'm just sharing with you all because these are the fights that we have to fight and I will need everybody's help and support uh, to fight this fight in India. Uh, there has to be an extensive sampling of people. Uh, uh, there's another argument in India that, oh, art is for art's sake and artists don't want money. Artists just want their art to go forward. So I always tell them that you know, if a patient doesn't need treatment, that doesn't mean that you're not going to give the treatment. It's the job of the society to provide for the artist, not the other way around. So we must uh, make sure that, that all these questions are answered and we are well informed. All of us are well informed in India and, and taking the expertise from here. I'm very thankful, I'm very grateful that I'm here today uh, uh, so that I could learn so much from all of you. But uh, as you all know, India is a unique country. We have, IPRS has done a fantastic job, as my friend Ben uh, uh, mentioned earlier in the copyright, uh, 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 in the uh, 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 buyout uh, session. Yes, we have done good, but um, as Javed Saab, our chairman, always says that this is, it's just the tip. We still, we still have a long way to go. We have increased our collections by uh, five times in the last four years. Uh, almost, almost five, like it was 46 crores something in, in 2017 and last, this year we have distributed 300 crores, which is, which is a lot. Um, but, but the whole idea is that as, of, as far as the private levy is concerned, uh, India gave the world zero and that's what we have. <laughs> that's all that we have. I, I, I'm also anticipating, I don't know how the legal framework in the other countries work. Oh, I have two minutes, I can speak. Um, uh, the, I don't know how, how the other uh, countries work, but in India we do not have it built in in the copyright law about the, the private levy. I don't think we have uh, built, remuneration is not built in. Recognition is built in, but remuneration is not. But my point is that if, if remuneration does not follow recognition, what use is that recognition? What is the point of that recognition? So uh, we probably in our legal system, we can claim there's another uh, uh, way to claim it, which is called the loss of opportunity. Like if you have, if you have created something and you, you were able to make some money out of it and you cannot by any reason or by any party stopping you or thwarting, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, you, you can claim loss of opportunity. So probably we'll have to look at those things and we'll have to look at injective reliefs and those kind of clauses. But in India, this fight will just start. When I go back, I will start fighting for it now. That's when it will start. Thank you very much. I'm really, again, very, very thankful. And thank you again to the translating lady because I'm speaking very fast because I have only 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for being so patient. And I'll be here around if you want to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, the translators were keeping up with you very well. Don't, please don't be worried. Um, we were able to feel your energy at IPRS. 
So actually, the amount of collection increased f five times. So that's because of your energy, I think. Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you very much for each one of you. Professor Lee, could you make some comments? You also mentioned about the roles of music. The music industry would be the most benefit from the private copying levy, but the, those who can be also be the damage uh, with the insufficient the mechanism of the private copying levy could be also the copyright holders. So with the music, the revenues for the restaurants could be increasing in terms of revenues, like the cafes, the coffee shops, with music. They can also earn a lot of the revenues with music as the background music, because music for the business is the very key and essential elements for the increasing revenues, of course. Nobody cannot really deny it. In this regard, the awareness on the private copying levy could be also more essential in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lee. So he talked about music. Actually, he, he uses Korean dialect. So I am kind of making fun of him using Korean dialect. Sorry. So we are supposed to have Q&A for 10 minutes. Do we have enough time to do Q&A? Yes. Uh, we may take questions from the floor. Um, if you have a question, please uh, say who your question goes to. So I, I can just skip my self-introduction. I need to introduce myself. Yes. I am from. I came from Daegu. I am also a composer. I registered my songs and I received the invitation from the seminar organizer. So I came here out of curiosity and interest and I have one question in my mind. I am a teacher at elementary school. I am teaching elementary school students, and my second job is musician. Actually, I don't know well about laws and regulations, and you're talking about uh, laws that I don't know well. So my question may sound f funny and silly. Um, my question may sound silly because I'm not an uh, expert in law. So anyone can answer my question. In Korea, we're trying to uh, establish private copy levy system, and Ms. Mrs. Doyeon Lee said that the Korean law ensures the property rights, but there is a restriction in the level of protection of property rights because they want some of the copyrighted works to be used for the public goods without remuneration. And I want to know more details about uh, the, the aspect you mentioned. And I wonder how much uh, private copying levy uh, we can collect in Korea. It seems that the Korean government is not willing to adopt the private copy levy system. So could you answer this question? Actually, private copying levy is a very important legal issue we are discussing at the government and at, at economic sector. The Private copying levy is a very important right, and copyright is the right of the artists and creators. When artists create art, this is not like creating the whole universe. Actually, they are influenced by their senior artists and junior artists in their creative arts. So. Korean government says that the copywriters or creators have a bit of duty to make contribution to the public goods uh, by putting, by recognizing a 
a level of restriction in the level of um, respect or remuneration, their respect for their copyrighted work. But these days, the Korean government acknowledges the importance of remuneration for the copyrighters. So it's a, it's a matter of timing. I believe Korea will adopt the system. As mentioned before, the four instance, of course, we have the higher prices on the products, like the copying machine or the copying the, the, the media or the materials. Actually, the prices on all the different spectrums will be absolutely higher over time. So that the four, the distributors or the labels, yes, they don't really like to pay the higher prices from for the private copying, the remu remunerations. So how to collect with the increasing prices of the levy. And absolutely, the manufacturer producers and di di distributors will really feel that that system would be not really favorable for their business. But still, we also need to take another leap forward to the, have the further development when it comes to the private copying levy, so that by imposing and making very equitable the allocation and distributions on the lobby that we have collected, and we also need to consider some of the, the feasible ways how to really have the very equitable allocation and distributions after collecting the levy and remuneration so that we can also have the better ways for our creators. Or for instance, we can also utilize those some part of the levy for the promoting our cultures and industries. Yes, you also mentioned about the things that we also need to also consider the benefits for the music industry stakeholders. Are there any further questions? We'd like to also get only one more question due to the time constraints. It's my first time to take part in International Music Creators Seminar, and I really feel that it's a very rewarding time that I am taking part in this very important the platform. And I am the taking a lot of experience that I also the major and created some of the Korean traditional song and I'm also teaching some of the Korean say my trout which is one of the traditional genre and as some of the broadcastings like I was able to also take part in the some of the programs in which that some of you are familiar with that the programs so by uploading and taking some videos and I also paid to upload the video clips because I also sang a song from their renowned song and probably it's been only 24 hours after I uploaded that my video clip after singing very renowned or famous song on YouTube and on that the YouTube the broadcast and I also shared with that the song and video clip to the other stakeholders and they also encouraged me to report that the song has been or so um, the link with the artist or the creators why should I report the title of the song after loading the video clips when it comes to the IP intellectual party and the name of the artist and the songwriter or the lyric artist are to be also absolutely specified if you upload that video clip on your performance. So probably like nobody did not really take any intention not to really include the artist's name or the the composer's name. It's actually to enforce the listen to to their voices via the IP. So that's kind of, that's a matter of the IP. So intellectual property rights, yes, you need to consider to specify that information as well on uploading the video clip. So yes, probably only one more question due to the time constraints. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for giving us this important opportunity. I would like to thank uh, the Kamka and today's conference was so helpful for me. I am a singer. My name is Jung Jin Suk. I am a Korean singer. Today, 
All your presentation was so insightful and helpful for me, especially in the presentation about buyout contract. I received a lot of help. Musicians, artists, or creators often experience challenges and economic difficulties when they get older. And actually, artists and musicians now have very good opportunity to to make improvement. I today I found the reason why elder why elder Korean singers go through financial difficulties in their later life. This is because they signed oftentimes buy out contract without knowing about it. Many musicians are talented but they cannot produce their own uh, record labels and many in many cases they sign buy out contract with the producers. So the presentation about buyout was very important to us. It's a very important thing for us to know. And I want to uh, share what I learned today with other artists and creators together. And if just one group or if just one organization makes effort, it will not be easy. But we have many like-minded celebrities and musicians and creators. If we join our hands together, uh, we can solve the problem. And also the presenter mentioned that the private copying levy is not uh, very high. It's less than the value added uh, cost. So. Um, all the content was very thank, um, helpful. This, this is not question, but uh, words of thanks and encouragement. Um, actually, I am Kim Young-chul from SBS, the one of the major broadcasting company. And while the forming the, the Korea Journalist Association, I am the one of the members and founders. And I listen to music via YouTube and a lot of the channels. But I wonder that, of course, it's better to collect a levy. And how to allocate and distribute those levy? How do you do that? And some of the levies collected are being also distributed and allocated to the Korean producers or the Korean creators associations, like performers, creators, will be also getting the, some part of the levy, and, and also other remaining part could be also allocated and utilized for some of the more social contributions. We also need to further develop by also listening or the borrowing some of the examples from other countries, because about the 25% of the levy collected are actually contributed for the social contributions and welfare, if you look at the case in France. Still, those measures and the policies, along with the samples or some of the references tasks on other countries, are to be also applied for improving further policies, how to really allocate those levies collected in a very more equitable manner. So still, transparent allocation is definitely needed. Yes, you're expert to give the very good answer. Thank you. Are there any questions? Is that question or encouraging remarks? Chair. Actually, today I would like to thank the audience for asking good questions. And I would like to thank panelists for um, their, all their comments. Private copying levy system is absolutely a must in Korea. In order to adopt private copying levy um, in Korea, we will have to make tremendous efforts. And the seminar we're having today will be the first step towards private copying levy. And uh, it's fortunate that there is a hope that the private copying levy can be legislated in Korea. We always have the data and rules. Based on the data and rules, we're going to start um, urging the government to approve the Private Copying Levy Act. And we are working with the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism. Thank you. And uh, time's up. Actually, we are behind the schedule. So we will have to make conclusion. Music is our spirit. If we don't have music, actually, we cannot imagine a world without music. Victor Hugo, um, 
they created the Bern Convention with musicians and artists, and the right of artists began to be acknowledged. And we are making more use of music, and we have to make more compensation for the music creators. This is why we are having this seminar today. Actually, Kamka has a very important role to play. With Professor Lee, I visited many foreign conferences, like WIPO conference, and I met with an uh, attorney from Australia who was a member of CESA. And the Australian lawyer said, oh, the Comcast members have such excellent uh, abilities, the excellent competencies. And he mentioned that he uh, joined a training uh, with the members of Comca, and he found that the Comca members have such excellent capability. And I was touched by that comment. Comca is increasing the solidarity with internal, domestic, and overseas um, art uh, copyright-related organizations. And one of the, actually, we are going to focus our efforts on the research as well. And we will do our best for the international cooperation activities for the sake of our members. We want to make our society a happier place for musicians. And let's make more efforts together. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words. 네, 이로써 2022년 국제창작자 세미나를 마치도록 하겠습니다. 모두 바쁘신 가운데 귀중한 시간 내주셔서 함께 해주신 여러분 대단히 감사합니다. 본 행사가 음악 산업의 발전에 유의미한 방향을 제시했기를 바라며 함께 자리해 주신 여러분 다시 한번 대단히 감사합니다. This brings us to the end of the International Music Creators Seminar. Thank you so much for taking out your precious time to be here with us. I hope that this productive conversations uh, helped you uh, help create and develop the music creators industry. The, uh, 네, 기념 촬영 있겠습니다. APMA 집행위 및 발제자분들.